I'm glad you all are here. And uh, I want to give a big shout out. Thanks to Jim. Uh, David was, he doesn't look like David Fuller. Does he? He was, and uh, David had uh, an emergency at his work today. So uh, Jim, once again, stepped up to the call. And we are so grateful. He is just a wonderful brother here for all of us. So thank you, thank you, thank you. Jim. Follow, follow me. Good words, you know, and to be able to allow those words to move through us and transcend what we're doing. And uh, when they were singing that song, this just came to me, and uh, I want to just share it for one minute. Uh, and follow me. And we've probably all heard the scripture where it says, the children shall lead them. The children shall lead them. And so in, uh, metaphysically, we look at uh, Father God is force, Mother God is wisdom, and Child God is love. And so love will lead us now. This is the directive now for love to guide us and lead us in all that we're doing. So uh, we can uh, attach love to many different experiences and people, places, and things, but ultimately it is that divine love that will guide us and lead us to our perfect place. Uh, and uh, so I just want to share a, a, a poem, and it's about like our walk. <clears throat> it's called The Plan. When winds of change are blowing, what's there for us to see? Can we keep our vision high? Behold what's now to be? To see is just the first step. Questions open the door. Allowing forward motion, life keeps revealing more. Letting go can free the soul from moments lost to time. If life is about expressing, is it time to be a blessing? Unique the gift within each heart to just let go and play our part. Each snowflake gently whispers, I am. We too integral in God's plan. Each snowflake gently whispers, I am. There is a divine plan going on and snowflakes are a part of it. And just think if snowflakes didn't play their part. <laughs> Each snowflake is unique. It's so neat when they put them under a microscope and see the beauty and the symmetry. Unique. And they play their part in God's plan. And we are unique. We are unique. We're the unique individual expression of God's love on the planet. And we're just being asked to play our part. To play our part. And uh, somehow that's got lost in translation. <laughs> and people want us to play all sorts of different parts. People want us to play a part for them. And we came here to play our part for God. To play our part for God. This night, or this uh, month, has been awesome. The lessons are, uh, with the lessons about peace, we're being invited to practice peace in our daily living. See, that's part of the plan. We forgot. So we have to practice. We have to practice this stuff. As we live in these, live with these, as we live with peace in our daily loves, we can become the gentle brother, the gentle sister. The gentle brother, the gentle sister. That individual expression of God's love through our uniqueness. So that's what uh, this month is presented with. And uh, so I'll just ask, how's everybody been doing? Great. Hey, I love that. Big, big grades coming out. It, because if we take these steps, the transformation occurs. It, it's, it's the law. So um, to begin with, shared, Cindy shared about listening in love. The, the, the first step that we could take is to listen in love. You know? To listen in love from our soul. Love must be our innermost and spontaneous response toward every soul we meet. See, we are one. And when we get down to that oneness of I am, child of God, a unique soul, we can begin to see that in others. And 
do we always uniquely experience and express the highest good? No, we don't. <laughs> and so this is where love comes in. And, and to love our others, you know, we're all in this together. And if we begin to just let go of judgments and critiques, criticism, and just begin to accept another, as we begin to accept ourselves as a soul on this journey, we're on a soul journey, you know. So begin to, first of all, cut ourselves some slack and be loving and kind to ourself. This too shall pass. And then that allows us to give that gift to our brothers and sisters. So uh, listening in love, you know, listening from our heart, not maybe logically or with reason, with love within our heart, unconditional love, accepting love. The next week, or last week, she shared about the power of light. The power of light, you see, all is light. And as we focus on the light, our hearts expanded. Because within our heart, we are the light. We are the light. So what we've been doing is we've been, um, here's a good phrase, looking for love in all the wrong places. <laughs> so we want to go within our heart and ask to see that love, to feel that love. Like when we start out, Father, I ask to feel your love. If we just start that, begin our each day with that, Father, I ask to feel your love. What we're doing is we're recalibrating to this vibration and we can begin our day in love, in love. And then uh, today, uh, the topic I am going to share with you is trust in tranquility. And trust will lead us to tranquility. Uh, and so what we're going to do is we're going to look at ways where we can explore what trust really is and then how we can use it in our, our life. How's that? So to begin with, I'm going to read something y'all have already heard and know. But I'm going to share it with you one more time, because God wants me to. Okay? And this is in uh, chapter 99 of the Aquarian Gospel. And uh, this is part of Jesus' teaching, when he was teaching people to be attitudes. Okay? And so this is chapter 99, and I'm going to start with... Um, 26, okay? Behold the flowers of the earth. They trust in God and they grow. They make the earth resplendent with their beauty and perfume. Trust. Look to the lilies of the field, the messengers of a holy love. No son of man, not even Solomon, in all his excellence, was ever clothed like one of these. Trust. And yet, they simply trust in God. They feed from his hand. They lay down their heads and rest upon his breast. If God so clothes and feeds the flowers and the birds that do his will, will he not feed and clothe his children when they trust in him? Trust. Seek first the kingdom of the soul, the righteousness of God, the good of men, and murmur not. God will protect and feed and clothe. Trust. God cares for those who trust in him and serves the race. Trust. Maybe we, as we've looked for love in all the wrong places, we've looked for trust in all the wrong places. And in this world that we live in right now, our uh, trust quotient is being shaken. Like, what can I trust? And so here, I, th I think this is a beautiful scripture, and it's used a lot in a lot of different services and things like that. But the main thing is, is the birds and the flowers and everything is just being what they are created to be. And they trusted the process. And we're being asked, to move into that process of being who we came to be. Who we came to be. We're soul. We're on a soul journey. And so as we begin to uh, just shift, now we're going to shift our perspective a little bit, 
and uh, see yourself differently, see the world differently. Uh, so if we see ourselves differently and we see the world differently, we can begin to call for change, change in ourselves and change in our life. It seems like we live in a time of high anxiety and chaos. Could we maybe not on that one? Okay. Climate change, economic instability, pandemic, social unrest, and the list can go on and on. Anxiety is epidemic. So wouldn't it behoove us to seek trust in God and allow that to take us to tranquility, serenity, to experience that peace? You see, and so we cannot solve any problems at the level they're created on. So as we look at the world, and it may look as, you know, chaotic and uh, disastrous to lift, to lift up, and ask God for clarity and understanding. Ask God for clarity and understanding. And then when we do that, we're surrendering, okay? This, in our metaphysics classes, we teach these universal laws. And this is a law of non-resistance, which I think is coming into play pretty much these days. Allow the outer to flow through you and without opinion or judgment. Wow. Allow the outer to flow through you. So we're going to... You're not going to get caught up in climate change and economic instability, pandemic, social unrest, all these things. Just let it flow. Let it flow. And there was a little YouTube blip, and it's a little girl, and her dad's giving her a little bit of a hard time. And she looks at him and says, you worry about yourself. You see? You worry about yourself. I'm okay, Dad. I got my seatbelt on. Okay? <laughs> and, you know, I think if we can move into that aspect, that's letting it go. You see what I'm saying? As we begin to trust in God, God within us, God within another, that's the kicker. Trust the God within them that has them on their perfect path. We're trying to find our perfect path, aren't we? So we, we focus on ours? And trust God for our brothers and sisters. Uh, so in these times, don't we seek peace and tranquility? And I won't even go into the ways people are seeking that now because I want to go to trust in God. See, trust in God. Because as we begin to trust in God, that's where we will find that peace. And that peace is within our hearts. See? That's where we have to go. It's within our heart. Okay? All things work together for good for the man who woman who loves God, who trusts God, who trusts God. You see? And that's that divine order. That's the lilies of the fields. That's the birds dressed in their raiment. Trust in God. I'm going to do what I need to do, be who I need to be, and I know I'm going to be taken care of. And we all know that there is consciousness in every living thing. You see? We think we're it. But there's consciousness in every living thing. There's consciousness in plants. There's consciousness in animals. There's consciousness in crystals. Say consciousness. So we begin to expand out a little bit to accept God consciousness in all aspects of life. And maybe trust that process. You see? Let go. Let it flow. Let it flow. When we take care of our life, our business, focus on create what we want to manifest, and then let go of the outer. Let go of the cans, cans, shoulds, shoulds, all that stuff to go to I am and, and trust the presence of God within you to give you all you need. 
That's what all the teachers taught since time began. Go within, touch that spark of divinity, and allow it to grow and expand and radiate through your life. That's who we are. That's who we are. We are the light. We are the light. These bodies are vehicles. They're vehicles for our soul. And so we lose our soul when we focus on the ride to begin to understand who we truly are. You know, we can look around at our world, and uh, this is uh, from White Eagle, uh, never blame others for your situation. Has anyone here ever blamed another for their situation? <laughs> oh, let's see, we all raise our hands. <laughs> well, we can do that if we want, but it's not going to get us anywhere. You see? see. So, the law of non-resistance, okay, and we'll let that go. What you resist persists. Honor your own power by honoring the choices of others. Stay on your path. You see? Stay on your path. And that's motion. I'm going to keep on my own forward motion. So, so when we blame others for our problems, <clears throat> it doesn't solve anything because they're not our problem. It's within us to begin to understand what thought, belief, pattern am I holding that's manifesting this. Here's a, here's a good thing uh, <clears throat> from the Bible also. <clears throat> and if you have heard this before and you feel like it, just wave your hand. I'll take that. But if he had faith, the grain of a mustard seed, you could say to the mountain, mountain, move, and it'll fall into the sea. Has anybody ever heard that one? Okay. So here's, here's what they don't, they should put that in the next sentence underneath that. <clears throat> you created the mountain. <laughs> Does anyone believe that? You see? And maybe the mountain's not bad. Maybe the mountain's a teacher. Maybe our mountain's there to inspire us. Do you see? And yet we, we want to blame the mountain. Mm -mm. We created it. So if you have faith, all we got to do is know a little bit. Here's this. I have faith and trust in God within me. See? To be able to create the world, the life I want to experience. You know how much that is? A mustard seed is so small. You see? That's why they use that as a parable. It's like so small. It doesn't take, but we got to have faith. We have to participate. We're here to be the hands and feet, the eyes, the mouth of God on the planet, you see? To allow God to flow through us, our unique expression of God. So as we begin to accept that we created situations in our life, that's the first step. Oh, wow, I created that. Why? <laughs> you know? And if we take some time to go within, we'll get clarity and understanding, okay? Why did I create this? When we look within our own heart, divine love will reveal what we need to do ourself in any condition. And the operative word is what we need to do ourself. You see? The love within us, God within us, that spiritual essence, God conscious within us, will reveal what we need to do ourself. Hey, Bonnie, I need you to do this for me. And God's going, Patrick. She's got her own stuff. <laughs> Bonnie says to Patrick, Patrick, you worry about your own stuff. See, but do you see how often we defer our opportunities to grow and expand and manifest and demonstrate who we are? The unlimited children of God. Can you do this for me? Help me out here. I think if you go back into the New Testament, <laughs> I love Jesus. He's such a blessed manifestation of the love of God made manifest. He just did it. I'm going. You want to go? Follow me. You want to do it? Follow me. You see? He didn't ask people for permission and ask them to do it for him. 
He spoke the truth. He just spoke the truth. Love one another. He didn't make anybody do that. It's a good directive. <laughs> we choose and live that way. We will transform. You see? And so for our own little personal situations and experiences and stuff like that, okay, I'm not going to get caught in it. I'm not going to resist. I'm going to let it go. I'm going to flow with what's happening. And then I'm going to go with them. God, you see? What do I need to see here? What do I need to do here, maybe? God is creator. To begin to exercise our ability to create in our life. God is within us all. Spirit is within us all. And as we begin to turn there, acknowledge that, accept that, and then to walk it. And just like I shared earlier, you know, to listen with love. We're not listening with our ears and reason in history. We're divine. We're eternal. And to begin to see through the shadows, light. Begin to see through the shadows is light. So this is our walk. We begin to walk this. And, and so that's what I've loved this month about, is it's given us tools to use daily. Tools to use daily in our walk. When we begin to exercise our uh, right to express who we truly are, our world changes. Trust God's wisdom and love to create an ingenious solution that, cus that is custom tailored to your situation. I love that word. Custom tailored to your situation. Are we all different? You say, there's not just one cookie cutter. We're all different and unique. And when we go within to the God within, the spirit within, I am presence, and ask, we will get our own unique solution for our situation. Isn't that nice to know? And that way, when someone says, hey, you shouldn't do that, go, I got it. Me and God are working this out. How freeing is that? I got it. Our own unique solutions within us. If we created the mountain, the solution to dissolving the mountains within us. We've got to connect the dots. And once we begin to uh, go within and ask uh, for our own unique personal solution, you know, perhaps we could even find a new approach to life. A new approach to life. Isn't that liberating and isn't that freeing? That we don't have to live like we've always lived it or people told us how we had to live or we even thought we had to live this way? Where'd those thoughts come from anyways? They didn't come from our heart. Because our hearts saying, I am, that I am. I'm all that you will ever need. Follow me. I am that I am. I am all that you will ever need. Follow me. Perhaps we could experience a greater degree of tranquility and peace. At least we could shorten our circle <laughs> instead of running around. I'm going to go within. Trust can lead to tranquility. Uh, as we begin to truly incorporate God into all aspects of our life, we'll begin to understand that there is a plan. There is a plan, a unique plan for each and every one of us. Each snowflake is gently whispering, I am unique. Our heart is gently whispering, I am unique. 
to begin to turn down the distractions that are around us from the outer and to go within and be still and ask to listen, ask to feel, ask to know. You will. You will feel, you will hear, and you will know. I think this is a, a really awesome, I, I love, you know, when, I, when we, all of us, when we can talk about Jesus, I love to talk about just the promises. You <laughs> see, he just gave us all a bunch of promises. And they were all good and pos positive and healthy. You know what I'm saying? To begin to live a positive lifestyle, a positive consciousness, allows us to stand on those promises. If we pray, to then just let it go. Don't look back and see if God's doing it the way we want it done. Ask, and what you receive will be perfect for you. God knows our needs, and God supplies. That's the lilies of the field. Gives them. And if God gives the flowers and the animals, he's going to give the people. God knows our needs before we even ask. And if we're open, we can receive the supply. Trust. Trust in God. So, uh, trusting God frees us from the chaos and stress of life. You see? Stress is on the outer. We bring it in. That's all on the outer. But we're beginning our walk from the inner. The inner knowing I am. I'm spirit. I'm son of God, daughter of God. Okay? And then as we go and trust in that presence of God, you know, that's what leads us to uh, tranquility. And tranquility, we could say, is like serenity. And in those places of serenity, we can experience true peace. You see? So uh, true peace exists deep, 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 deep within our heart. Deep, deep, deep within our heart. And as we begin to seek there, we can begin to make this our mantra. I am ever safe in the loving heart of God. I am ever safe in the loving heart of God. That could re release some stress, couldn't it? But trusting in the integrity of God, the wisdom of God, the power of God, the love of God. It's ours to accept. We put our hand out and receive it. And then we begin, become the living expression of the love of God. We become that peaceful presence of God, the gentle brother, the gentle sister. And as we live this way, now I think this makes it easier than ever. If we just live who we truly are, we're of service to our fellow man and to life itself. If any of you guys are from the north and grew up, you love snow. Because when you're a kid, it's the most magical thing that there is. Southern, mm, I don't know. I live in the south now, I want snow to stay up north. But, do you see, to begin to accept the natural beauty. I grew up up there to learn stuff that only snow could teach me in cold weather. You see? I can accept that. I guess I learned my lessons because I moved south. How's that? <laughs> I hope I learned my lessons. Yeah. Okay. So, so we become the living word. And, and don't we all hear that a lot about Jesus? The word made manifest the living word. Well, Jesus said, follow me. So 
Can't we all be the living word? In our own unique way. In our own unique way. And just accept your uniqueness. Just accept your uniqueness. That's all God wants you to do. You accept your uniqueness, your light goes, whoa, I am. It's so cool. And that's all we're asked to do. And then we, what we're doing is we've given ourselves permission to be that, and we've given others permission to be their uniqueness. Mm-hmm. Trust in God will lead us to the place of tranquility and peace that will allow us to be. Let's go with them. So let's just close your eyes and as you close your eyes and breathe, ask to feel God's love once again. I ask to feel your love, Father. And just breathe that gentle breath in and, and feel your body just almost melting into a softness to, to be able to absorb God's love even greater. And as you breathe in God's love and your energy gets soft, your, it begins to expand. And as your energy expands through God's love, you're giving yourself an opportunity to expand. To free yourself from limitations. Beliefs and patterns that would limit your knowing that you are the unlimited son, daughter of God. So just breathe and and just feel your energy getting soft. And then feel your energy just expanding out. Feel your energy expanding beyond the physical body, but you're still conscious. Feel it expanding out beyond your aura, out beyond all your etheric bodies. Just breathe and expand. And as you continue to allow yourself to expand bigger and brighter and more radiant, You find yourself as light. I am light. I am light. I am light. And just breathe and feel your unlimited nature, the pure potential. I am. And ask that the pure potential of God's divine love move through your body consciousness now. And in your heart, just say, thank you, God. Knowing that as you have asked, it's being done now. So just breathe and and be aware of your energy as you sit in your chair. Soft and receptive to the blessings of life. Ever safe in the loving heart of God. So just breathe and feel. And just gently open your eyes. Isn't it freeing to just ask and not have to follow up and make sure everything got done. Did you miss anything, God? No. Just ask. We've asked that God's love move through our sphere of consciousness. It did. It did. The path of peace, the path of spiritual awareness, requires patience. To be patient really means to have confidence in God. How's that? Can we all trust God? Yay, God.